The reason fire is such a threat is because spacecraft traditionally have higher levels of oxygen than the atmosphere, certainly in higher concentrations under, under pressure. They are also filled with electronic equipment. Electronic equipment puts out heat, and often there are sparks and arcs. It's a bad combination. Luckily, designers have made it easier for crews to put out fires where all of those miles of wire lurk behind the control panels. This is a mock-up of the space shuttle flight deck that we use for training of crews. If you look at the various panels we have, you will see small holes like this at various locations around it. And these are for fire extinguishers, so that if there is a fire behind one of these panels, you can put an extinguisher in there to extinguish the fire. Andrew Thomas knows a thing or two about fires in space. While on the Mir space station in 1998, a fire suddenly broke out. And all the smoke was pumped right out into the cabin. Crews hurtle through space in their enclosed craft, desperate to maintain the Earth-like atmosphere inside. Out here, fire is one of the biggest threats. In 1998, NASA astronaut Andrew Thomas is on board the Mir space station with two Russian cosmonauts. Suddenly, a fire breaks out. Ironically, the fire starts while cleaning what's known as an air scrubber, one of the filters designed to remove exhaled carbon dioxide and other toxins from the space crew's environment. All the smoke was pumped right out into the cabin, and so all of a sudden, the cabin in one part of the space station just became thick with a pall of smoke. And of course, all the air handlers then moved all that smoke around the spacecraft, so within about two hours, the entire spacecraft was completely filled with smoke. So we had to just wait for the air handlers to scrub all of this contamination out, and that took about two days. And we all manifested symptoms of the toxicity of that environment. When there's a lot of carbon monoxide at those levels, you have uh, nausea, uh, a certain amount of confusion, invariably a headache because you're oxygen deprived. It's, it's just a very uncomfortable feeling. The dangers of fire in space go beyond the fact that you can't open a window or call the fire department. Fire actually behaves differently inside a spacecraft in zero gravity. What we are seeing is a, is a candle flame. Uh, the bottom one uh, is a candle in normal gravity. And as you can see, the flame moves up because buoyancy pushes the, the hot gases uh, around the flame up. The top photograph is the same candle, but in the absence of, of gravity. Columbia Space Air Park for the module. They missed burn will be initiated here in about uh, 15 seconds. The hot gases don't move up and what you have is a, an spherical flame. There's the flame. So here's the initial light off for combustion module two. So putting a smoke detector on the ceiling like we do on Earth doesn't work in space. Instead, detectors are located next to small suction devices that draw air and any smoke or other toxins toward the detector. To figure out just how dangerous fire is in space, Professor Fernandez Peyo's team performs experiments in the University of California Berkeley Combustion Lab and on KC-135 aircraft in short bursts of zero G. In theory, fires in zero gravity should be less intense because the hot gases don't rise, which means cool air isn't drawn in at the base to keep feeding the flames. But they're finding that the reality inside a spacecraft is more dangerous. Air conditioning systems create small air currents. Those currents bring fresh air, or in this case, fuel, to the fire. At the same time, the low airflow and lack of gravity don't remove the heat as quickly as on Earth. The result? This type of fires are hotter and more dangerous than, than in, in normal gravity. 
and fire is likely to become even more of a safety hazard inside the new Ares Orion spacecraft being designed to replace the shuttle. What they've decided to do was to reduce the pressure and increase the oxygen. And by doing this, they reduce the preparation time that it takes for the astronauts to go from the vehicle to outside of the vehicle. So what we're doing is we're testing materials at that proposed environment. We've learned that um, for the uh, environment that they've chosen for the next generation of vehicles, things actually ignite about 20% faster than they would in the current environment. The combination of high oxygen content and low airflow means just about anything can catch fire, even metal. In a worst case future scenario, a space station crew is unable to quickly extinguish a fire. It grows too fast to seal off in a separate module. Even if they put on emergency oxygen masks, the heat of the flames will likely kill them. And if they're somehow able to survive the flames, the filtering system is completely overloaded. They are left to die in a toxic stew from smoke inhalation. The best chance of survival with an out-of-control fire is to abandon ship and return in a re-entry capsule if one is available. That was the key to the survival of the crew of Apollo 13. April 11th, 1970, the three-man crew launches into space. Two days later, on their way to the moon, an oxygen tank suddenly explodes. The explosion causes a substantial loss of oxygen and damages the service module's electrical system. The crew is forced to live in the cramped lunar capsule. Apollo 13 is the classic case of the failure that doesn't kill you. It happened at the right time. It happened when they were on their way to the moon so they could use the lunar module as a lifeboat and get back to Earth. Had the same problem occurred after the lunar landing when Lovell, Swigert, and Hayes were on their way back to Earth, there would have been nothing they could do. They would have been dead. The threat of fire is especially high inside spacesuits. During spacewalks, also known as EVAs or extravehicular activity, the spacesuits need to be kept at low pressures. Working in a fraction of Earth's atmosphere is the key to flexibility. If you had a spacesuit that was at one atmosphere, you would be like a, basically in a balloon and you couldn't move. With low pressure, just like a climber in the thin atmosphere of Mount Everest, astronauts need to breathe highly flammable 100% oxygen. This is an arm from the spacesuit. It was burned up in a fire in 1980 at Johnson Space Center. Just doing some checkout tests, pressurizing the system with the two different oxygen sources. And when this fire occurred, it was, you know, quite a shock. People were standing nearby it, and someone was supposed to be in the suit the next day for a manned test, and it could have been a fatal fire. Even as it is, this suit is worth, at the time, $3.1 million.